hello and welcome to the third episode of our protection podcast series in association with Royal London. Today, we're going to discuss whether clients can be put off by the thought of a long and drawn out application process, even if they're keen to proceed with taking out a protection policy. And we'll look at what advisors can do to dispel some of the myths around the application process and explore the ways providers can make it as easy as possible for people to get the cover they need and quickly. Hello, I'm Kimberly Dunder, Digital Content Manager, and today I'm joined once again by Shelley Reed. Um, but also we are joined by Craig Morton, who is Head of Distribution at Royal London. So um, Craig, as you haven't been on the last two episodes like Shelley has, um, could you give us an introduction about yourself? Sure, of course, Kimberly. I'm happy to be here. So my name's Craig Morton. I'm the Head of UK Protection Distribution here at Royal London. Um, the bulk of my 20 years at the organisation has been in the pensions arena, but for the last three and a half years now, I've been immersed in all things protection and the protection industry. And it's an absolute pleasure to be leading the protection distribution teams at Royal London. Yeah, great. So um, let's get into the main part of today's podcast. Um, so would it be fair to say that um, many people expect the application process for protection products to include, include reams of personal questions that can take ages uh, to painstakingly fill in? Kimberly, I think traditionally I would have said um, yes, um, but thankfully times have changed. Um, and I think this is probably part of the myth busting that the industry has to take on mm -hmm. uh, in a way that customers understand. So, you know, using the correct language and building the trust in the processes that are in place and evolving every day in the industry. So most processes now are actually quite slick and really quite efficient in nature. Mm -hmm. I think in days gone by, um, you had a multi-page application form would have been used, but now we see intelligent digital journeys and um, things are evolving at pace and it's even easier than, than expected now to get clients important cover. Mm -hmm. I think one, one kind of identifier of that is, I mean, here at Royal London, 76.5% of our online application forms were accepted on risk with no manual underwriting required. Right. So, that, you know, that automated underwriting and dynamic rules engine um, allows the process to be, in most cases, as I said, highly slick and efficient. I think one thing that the industry maybe doesn't shout loud enough about is our kind of strive to increase what we call our IDRs, mm -hmm. which is our immediate decision rates. Mm -hmm. um, and I mentioned that 76.5% of online apps are going on without that need for any manual underwriting. So just to kind of make you alive to the 23.5% the that did require further investigation, we were able to put over 60% of those cases on risk without mm -hmm. the need for any additional evidence. So th there is a lot of um, slick and efficient under underlying processes that are going on that maybe advisors and clients need to to be aware of. Mm -hmm. I, th I think it's probably important to uh, to point out as well for lots of advisors who maybe are in the wealth space that maybe consumer duty uh, is uh, encouraging them to get involved in the protection side. Then mm -hmm. it's probably a much different experience to when they uh, last dip their toe in that area of financial services. I think the online digital systems are, are so sophisticated now that we try to ask really intelligent questions to uh, cut out the things that maybe we don't need to know, but delve a little deeper into some areas such as, you know, if there's a lifestyle or a medical issue. Um, and I think that's why it's so important. Obviously, I can only speak for Royal London. But if an advisor is completing uh, the information, the application, uh, not online, then at least our data capture forms will absolutely mirror the online process. So it makes it a much easier um, a much easier task for the advisor because they, they can follow the questions one by one one by one. Um, but I'd also say to advisors, if you know, if they're doing an online question and they, they think that we're asking a lot of questions about 
a medical illness, for example, those extra few minutes to ask those few questions might well avoid us having to go for a GP report or indeed a medical. So it's well worth doing those stages up front. Um, so uh, the deadline for consumer duty is quickly approaching, as we've been talking about a lot recently. Um, so how does that affect this application process and um, the perception of it being so, you know, arduous? Craig? Yep, I think it's a good point, Kimberly. I mean, consumer duty coming in the second half of the year will undoubtedly um, have an interest in pension, wealth and investment advisors and looking at protection. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's so important that um, that persona of a an onboarding process being long and laborious is challenged. Um, I think there's a great opportunity to protect more and more clients out there in the UK and protect that financial resilience. So it's so important that advisors who haven't been engaging in protection understand that there's a slick, efficient process now in place to mm -hmm. get people covered. Yeah. And you you touched on this slightly, but um, what approach do you think advisors can take to dispel those myths to their clients? You know, those clients who may be like, oh, you know, I don't have time. I don't want to fill in. You know, what can they say to explain that to them? I think the only thing I'd add there is that, uh, you know, I think once clients understand the importance of that protection and they're really engaged with, uh, you know, taking that cover to look after their, their family, protect their lifestyle and their home, then uh, I, I think that they'll be prepared to take that extra time. So I think it's been engaged with the process. But also I think advisors to stress to the clients that, they need to take that time. They need to give the advisor all of the information. It needs to be honest and upfront. It's better for us to have too much information than none at all. So should something terrible happen to that family, the underwriting has all been done correctly and mm -hmm. we'll be able to make a claim really quickly. Craig, is there anything you wanted to add to that? Yeah, I could probably add um, one or two things to that, Kimberly. I think um, advisors have to be confident in the process themselves um, and the provider that they're using for their clients. So understand that where evidence is needed, um, we'll always start with the customer first rather than automatically write for GP reports, for example. Mm -hmm. um, and as Shelley said, you know, ensuring that the clients understand that the benefits of sharing accurate information with us is so, so important. But it's also important for them to understand what happens next if their case is referred for underwriting. Um, one of the biggest things that can switch a client off is confusion in that mm -hmm. application stage. So it's so, so important that advisors, you know, know the process from outset at quote right through to the case going live and are able to explain that to the, the client throughout the journey. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like very important. Um, and so kind of going off of that, what support is out there for advisors and their clients in the application process? Shelley, do you want to take that? Yeah, on? of course. Um, I think as well as having uh, support uh, before the applications made, we we are really proud at Royal London that we have dedicated underwriters and case managers that will sort of guide that application through, and most importantly, keep the advisor up to date, so they obviously in turn can keep the client up to date. So that that's really important. Um, and as far as other support that's available. I think that um, we have a, a, a pre-sales underwriting tool that means that if there are any areas that an advisor thinks that there might, uh, it might result in some rating, so such as family history or illness or a dangerous job or a hazardous pursuit, then the advisor can sort of counsel the, the client's expectations and run a pre-sales underwriting quote through First of all, just to see if there might be any additional loading to the to the premiums. And I think the only other thing I'd say on that, Kimberly, is that um, we we've already stressed a couple of minutes ago how important it is to get the information correct. 
So again, mm-hmm. one of the one of the things we have during our process is that the advisor is able to send to clients. That's what we call it. The actual uh, lifestyle and health questionnaire questions through to the client. It's really easy to do. It's even easier for the client to pick up. But at least then they can answer answer those questions at a time that suits them. They're probably at home, so they can check what milligram of medication they're on. They'll have all that information to hand, um, and they can fill it in on their tablet or iPhone or computer. Um, so it makes it easier to get that information information altogether so we you know we are doing all we can to make it easy for both the advisor and their client yeah and make it more accurate I guess being able to say exactly the milligrams and stuff that's very very good um Craig is there anything you wanted to add yeah I think there's there's two aspects to that support and Shelly touches on some of the people aspects that we have and we also have the kind of digital support that will come on to. But from a, a people point of view, Shelley mentioned the pre-sales line and the, the pre-sales team. Mm-hmm. We also have a dedicated team of case managers and expert underwriters when the case does go live. Mm-hmm. So there is um, questions if they need answered by the client or the advisor. Those are That team's always on hand to answer any questions that a client or advisor has. Um, we also have an excellent bit of resource and support um, available for advisors called the Business Support Unit. Mm-hmm. I call them a one-stop shop for advisors. So that they're a team who helps support and train advisors on online systems, be it the best advice systems or our own advisor dashboard or the My Royal London portal for clients. So we can run demos with advisors so that they're able to explain to clients just what service they'll get when they do, they do give plans to Royal London. Um, but from a, a digital point of view, um, the online advisor dashboard will mean that advisors are aware at any given stage where the cases that they give us are from a tracking point of view. They'll mm-hmm. be able just to go onto the online tracker and just see what, what stage each case is at. That'll allow them to keep the the client fully informed and then my Royal London portal for clients um, an excellent client portal for any um, any people that do have a Royal London plan you know they just log on they have access to download the plan documents you know real opportunity to engage with what they've just purchased mm-hmm. um, when it comes to protection which I think is so so important um, and they'll be able to have access to things like GP 24-7 our help and hand service um, and other well-being services that are there at a touch of a button uh, and the aim in that is really to get the engagement up you know and, and make people aware of just how important protection is for them. Mm-hmm. I think you know the use of technology in this you know obviously in our everyday lives we're using it now and it's really great that we can incorporate that into more serious things that we need to do in our lives not you know just the silly things where we need to go on Instagram or TikTok but being able to actually help ourselves is yeah a great benefit um so as providers what can they do to streamline the process and allow people to get their cover quickly what has been your experience Shelley yeah um I think we all know that if someone is young, fit and and healthy with no issues at all, then that that application can go through immediately and cover can go on risk immediately. So the things that are going to hold things up are going to be when we need more information. Again, we're really proud at Royal London that our underwriters are more than happy with the advisor's permission to be able to speak to a client direct. And sometimes just that conversation can answer a few questions that might preclude the need for any more uh, information such as GP reports or um, uh, or indeed a medical. So I think getting as much information up front um, and our systems will try to do that, but also adding that sort of personal touch from an an underwriter. And I think as we see um, insurance products develop, um, such things such as our diabetes life cover um, is uh, a protection life cover protection for someone with a specific uh, condition and those types 
types of application will uh, really be streamlined to ask the questions that we're already aware that someone has got mm. a condition. So we'll ask the relevant questions, try and streamline those questions to, to be able to get that cover in place as quickly as possible. Sounds great. Um, yeah, it, it makes it feel more personalized. Um, I like that. Uh, Craig, is there anything else you wanted to add to that about streamlining the process? Yeah, I think there's there, there's two things that are in play here at Royal London that, that we see as standard um, that, that are worth checking um, for advisors out there with other firms to see if they have similar. Um, the first one is free cover. So if someone has been good enough to engage in trying to buy protection, I think it's important that you know we can recognise that there can be a timeline in getting a case live. So we would offer what we call free cover. Mm -hmm. And we offer that across our life, critical illness and income protection plans at different levels. And it does mean the client can have a, a bit of peace of mind to a degree so that, you know, if something does happen whilst they're going through that underwriting journey without even paying a, a, a penny to the policy, they will have cover in place to mm -hmm. the point where in 2021, I think we paid out 127,000 in free cover claims. So that's just something that we have as standard um, for anyone who's looking to to start a policy here at Royal London. Mm -hmm. I think the second thing is really a true bit of innovation. Um, it's what we call underwrite later, cover now, underwrite later. Okay. And it means for um, personal, whole of life and some business um, protection products that we can get cover on virtually in day one. And then mm -hmm. we can cover the underwriting process for the, the next six months. Um, this has been what I would class as a true bit of innovation um, within the protection industry. Um, and it just allows us to get clients cover quicker. Mm -hmm. um, and it's worked very well. Um, we've had it in play two years now. Um, so that is a true bit of innovation that we've brought to the market. Yeah. So does this, uh, and that covers like uh, a client who has complex cases that needs immediate cover. Yes, it does, Kimberly. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's great. Um, well, I think that is all we have time for in today's episode. Um, thank you so much for joining me, Shelley and Craig, and I look forward to speaking to you in the next one. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Join us for the next episode in the series, where we'll discuss how value-added services included with many protection policies can help reassure clients that they've chosen a good quality value for money option. And if you want tools and resources to help support your protection conversations during tough times, visit advisor.royallondon.com forward slash safe hands.